The dense and rugged Alaskan wilderness provided the perfect cover for a fierce and sadistic killer. Preying on vulnerable women, his actions were worse than your nightmares. Flying them to a remote island where he would release them and hunt them like animals. The man who did this goes by the name of Robert Hansen, who has a minimum of 21 victims, but suspected of many more, who sadly remain lost in the wilderness. In this episode, we are looking at a letter written by Hansen to a woman just a year before he died. It reveals what becomes of a man who hunted women for sport, who has become forgotten. But who was Robert Hansen? Born Robert Christian Hansen on February 15th, 1939, in Ezerville, Iowa. His father was a Danish immigrant who owned a bakery. He was also a strict disciplinarian. Hansen's childhood was spent working long hours in the family bakery. Though he was naturally left-handed, his father forced him to use his right hand instead. This resulted in a lifelong stutter as a teenager, he was painfully shy, had bad acne, and was mocked for his stutter. The boys at school made fun of him, and the girls he liked rejected him. He was often described as a loner. As a social outcast, he took refuge in time spent alone. Over time, he became an avid game hunter channeling his rage and fantasies of vengeance into the sport of stalking animals. In 1957, when he was 18 years old, Robert Hansen joined the United States Army Reserve, hoping to leave behind his troubled youth and make something of himself. For a while, he did. After serving a year in the reserves, he became an assistant drill instructor in Pocahontas, Iowa, and even married a young woman he met there. But Hansen still felt mistreated by the community and sought retaliation. In 1960, at the age of 21, he convinced a young bakery employee to help him burn down a school bus garage. When the boy later confessed, Hansen was arrested. His wife divorced him, leaving him alone and incarcerated. Though he was released just 20 months into his three year sentence for arson, he was jailed a few more times afterward for petty theft. Still, he managed to remarry another local woman. Finally, Hansen decided he'd had enough of the contiguous United States. In 1967, he moved to Anchorage, Alaska, which was about as far from his life in Iowa as he could get. He moved into a small community, had two children with his wife, and settled into a quiet routine. He was well liked and opened up a small bakery. But while the townspeople mostly bought into the facade of the happy baker with a family and the knack for hunting. Some cracks showed through Hansen's squeaky clean exterior. In 1972, he was arrested twice, once for the abduction and attempted essay of a housewife and again for essaying a prostitute. Unknown to authorities, his killing spree began in 1973 likely emboldened by his ability to walk free after his early crimes. This letter was given to us in a joint collaboration with true crime murderabilia and serial killer obsessive. There are two Facebook groups, 
and I want to say thank you. And if you have not already joined, please follow the links in the description or just find them on Facebook. And finally, I have changed the name of the woman to Dawn to keep her anonymity. Dear Dawn, hello my friend, hope this finds you doing well. I'm getting along fine. Some days are better than others, but mostly good. Well, that's nice, isn't it? He's doing well, albeit with a little bit of guilt tripping in there. The Most Dangerous Game by author Richard Connell is a short written story from 1924, which recounts the tale of a wealthy Russian aristocrat who, bored with trapping animals, lures a big game hunter to his island and hunts him for sport. This perverse idea of humans hunting humans has captivated people ever since the story's first publication. The concept has appeared numerous times in popular culture, but for the most part, it was purely fiction. That was until Robert Hansen turned it into a reality. In 1983, more than a decade after Hansen moved to Anchorage, barefoot and handcuffed, a 17-year-old girl named Cindy Paulson was found running frantically down 6th Avenue. After escaping the clutches of Hansen, Paulson was picked up by a driver and returned to a motel, where she was reunited with her pimp. Paulson, a prostitute, told her story to police. She described being held hostage by a man who'd handcuffed her to his car, held her at gunpoint and took her to his house, where he chained her by the neck to the ceiling. The man essayed and tortured her repeatedly before attempting to load her onto a plane and take her to his meat cabin on an isolated island. As the man prepared the plane for takeoff, he left Paulson in the car, and she seized her only opportunity of escape, leaving her shoes behind as evidence. Although Hansen did chase her, he was too late. Sure looks it that you and your nose ring have parted company. You are a very good looking young lady. The picture that you sent with your last letter looks much better than the first. Remember to be yourself and not what other people around you think looks hip. I think it's especially creepy that he says good looking young woman as it was young women who were his victims and also giving her advice on her appearance. He's 74 years old at the time of writing this letter and I think he's subtly showing that he's turned into a creepy old pervert. Maybe I'm wrong and maybe he is just being supportive. Who knows? Robert Hansen fit the description of the kidnapper perfectly. Paulson even described his stutter and identified his plane, but police were still reluctant to arrest him. During questioning, Hansen admitted that he had met the girl, but claimed she was setting him up because he had refused to pay her extortionate demands. When he told police about his strong alibi provided by a friend and a search of his house revealing nothing, he was then released. On top of this, Paulson, in her line of work, had an inherent distrust for the police. And the police had an inherent distrust in her. So she thought that she would never be believed in a court of law and decided to try and just put it behind her. But one officer did believe her, an officer called Greg Baker, and he wouldn't let the case go. But for now, a predator was roaming the streets of Anchorage and was free to claim more victims. Meanwhile, when two bodies were discovered in the Matanuska Susinta Valley, along with matching shell casings nearby, Alaska state troopers were convinced a serial killer was on the loose. Several sex workers and dancers had gone missing, sadly more than the usual amount, and troopers were beginning to find the bodies. 
the authorities had no idea who was behind the slayings, and for the first time, police and prostitutes were on the same side to try and keep street workers out of harm's way. After some digging, Officer Baker found the records from 12 years previous about Hansen's convictions for essaying and abduction. Along with Paulson's story, he was sure this was the man behind the murders, but he could not hand his findings to his superiors, as the case had been suspended and Baker was acting against orders. So instead, he handed the files to state troopers. Hansen was now the prime suspect. But the police needed proof. This led to the involvement of the FBI, including now retired FBI agent John Douglas, who helped pioneer the field of criminal profiling. Douglas put together a psychological profile of the killer based on the details of the case and the injuries inflicted on the recovered bodies. He theorized that the killer was an experienced hunter with low self-esteem and a history of being rejected by women and this would likely mean that he had a stutter or lisp blew us all away I think is that when they when they said he's either going to be, be a stutterer or someone who has a lisp a speech defect how do you figure that it's truly amazing the insights that profiling can give what got you interested in photography what kind of camera do you have or use what kind of pictures do you work with Maybe he was interested in her photography. Maybe he did just want to be her friend. But I just can't help but feel there is always an ulterior motive. Is it just a coincidence that this woman fits his victim profile? What's she getting from this? And does he live out some fantasy through communicating with her? Though he had been cleared several times before, there was no doubt about it. Robert Hansen fit the profile almost exactly. What's more, he owned a bush plane and a cabin in the Matanuska Susatina Valley. The police soon obtained a warrant to search Hansen's plane, car and homes. What they found shocked them. The horror that Robert Hansen's victims had endured was almost too macabre to believe. In Anchorage, Hansen was the respected business owner, known for his skill as a bow hunter. The den in his home was decorated with hunting trophies and animals mounted on the walls, and he even set a few bow hunting records. But what no one knew is that for more than a decade, the hunter had also been collecting trophies from another kind of kill. Hansen mainly targeted sex workers and exotic dancers from around Anchorage. He would kidnap the women, he would either drive or fly them in his private bush plane, out to his cabin in the remote Alaskan bush. If the women did not put up a fight, he would essay them and bring them back to town, threatening them into secrecy. But those who did not cooperate suffered a truly brutal fate. Today's Valentine's Day. It's 37 degrees here in Seward. Gosh, it's generally below freezing and blowing snow. The weather is really changing. I see on TV that you just had a really big snowstorm on the East Coast. Gosh, you got the snow we were supposed to have. I'll have to call you my Russian Eskimo. <laughs> He's Russian Eskimo. This is the most flirtatious he's been, and it's also interesting how he's chose to write this letter on Valentine's Day. What does a young woman want with a 74 year old, socially inept serial killer? Out in the wilderness, his favorite location was along Nick River. Robert Hansen would set the women free. For a moment, they'd have hope that this was their chance to escape. Then, as they ran for their lives, he would track them down, taking his time, hunting them like wild animals. 
armed with a hunting knife and a 223 caliber Ruger Mini 14 rifle. He'd torture the women with this chase for hours and sometimes days at a time until he located his prey and shot them like game. A postal money order can be got in any post office. Just have them put my name and number on it and put it in the next letter you send to me. A sure thank you very much, Dawn. My family over the years have gone on with their lives and I've been kind of forgotten. I don't blame them because they have got their lives to live and take care of. Well, I'm still confused about what she's getting from this, but now I understand what Robert's getting from it. His family have forgotten about him, and I guess that's your punishment for taking women to remote places and hunting them down like animals. Could you imagine finding out someone like this was your granddad? You've never met him, but you've just heard about the heinous acts that he committed. How would you react? While searching the butcher baker's home, police found an aviation map of the area hidden in the headboard of his bed. It was marked with tiny X's, denoting the kill and burial sites of his victims. Some of the X marks matched up with where police had found bodies. There was 24 X's in all. What's more, in the psychological profile of the killer, Douglas had predicted that the murderer would keep souvenirs from his prey. Sure enough, in the basement of Hanson's home, police found a stash of jewellery. In the stash was a necklace that belonged to one of the victims. Faced with the evidence, in 1984, Hanson confessed to murdering 17 women and essaying another 30 women. Good night, young lady, and may God bless. I wish you the very best, Robert. In 1984, Robert Hansen was sentenced to 461 years plus life in prison without parole. He was imprisoned at Spring Creek Correctional Center in Seward, Alaska, where he died in 2014. As part of a plea bargain, Robert Hansen was only ever charged with four of the 17 murders he confessed to. In exchange for the reduced conviction, Robert Hansen agreed to assist police in locating the remaining bodies plotted on his kill map. Unfortunately, five of the bodies have still not been found to this day, and Hansen took the secret of their locations to his grave. To Robert Hansen, good riddance. To the audience, thank you for watching and until next time, stay sane.